Yeah, they got divorced. It, it was sort of a dark time. That is always so tough. You know, my parents got divorced, and they assured me it wasn't my fault. It was my sister's. You just ignored Burton's unhappy story just to get a joke out there. Even worse, that was my joke, John. I'm flattered, but you shouldn't steal my jokes. <laughs> I'm flattered, but you shouldn't steal my jokes. You stole one of my jokes this morning. You know, I used to be a mind reader, but, you know, it's just so hard to tell what people are thinking. Both of you guys steal my jokes. I can't immediately think of an example, but I'm not, you know... I think we can all agree that my comic delivery is best. I was so good when I started, I used to have my jokes hand-delivered. I don't know, that's kind of what I pride myself on, my delivery. Sometimes, comedically, I'm referred to as the delivery man. I've never heard anyone call you that. I didn't see Van Gogh paint, but I know that the paintings exist. What was that? I'm throwing down the gauntlet. That's a napkin. Plus, you don't throw down the gauntlet. You run the gauntlet. Don't you run the gamut? I think John means he's challenging us to a comic delivery contest. I'm calling a full bus meeting. What is this, France? See, that was a great delivery. We're asking you to vote objectively between the three of us. I think you're all forgetting that I'm an observational comic. No, we're trying to forget. All four of you are very gifted, and I frankly refuse to vote. It's like comparing apples with completely different kinds of apples. We need a proper joke-off. Like a group joke-off. A circle joke. You know what's become clear to me is that we need a real professional judge. Oh, great. And where are we supposed to find a... a... Oh, but look... I think we're going to outnumber the performers. Is anyone other than me wondering why this whole thing is even remotely necessary? Well, how else are we going to objectively find out who's the funniest? Why does it matter? Okay, a hooker, a priest. uh, Let me make it a nun and a hooker. Hey, John, as a friend, I don't think you're starting with your strongest material. I've been opening with this joke for eight years. But you've been playing to second graders, and this is a different crowd. Notice how my voice is going up and down with affection? Leo, I think you should just worry about Leo. That hurt. And Tanya, you should... Where is Tanya? Jesus, I feel like I'm in a cage. Who cares where I was? First of all, I didn't ask where you was. John, you gotta let us be ourselves. It's like we're living in a cage, perhaps. But Tanya, where were you? You know, when we first started this club, we started with maybe 12 people on a weekday night. I have built it to this. Thank you so much for coming, especially on a night like this. I know we all have a heavy heart with the Sunoco station closing. It's been 16 years, and we now have much of their food on sale here. Okay, here's how our scoring system works, and pay attention because it's a little complicated. Each contestant tells one joke, and I rate them from 1 to 100. A 1 represents the worst possible score, whereas a score of 100... Okay, we got it. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't know I was in the presence of someone who knows more about comedy than me. I am so sorry, Mr. Jenkins. The damage has been done. Call me Rick. Thanks, Rick. Our first of four contestants tonight is Leo Huckstep, the compelling new experimental rock on tour. Thanks for remembering. There's my Leo. I, uh, can you hear me? I'm remembering a waggish fellow. <laughs> It seems he got all caught up with a group of traveling thespians who had temporarily lost their way. Soon enough, as fate would have it... We get the gist of your story. The guy was going to join the thespians and they get even more lost. Uh, Yeah, that may be true, but... Yeah, yeah. Time's up. My score for Leo Huxep is 5 out of 100. But my time is not up. 3! And 6 for the elderly woman. All right, up next we have a kid who's uh, so young you won't get his references. They they haven't even happened yet. Anyways, he describes himself as self-consciously and mostly sad comic, uh, Matt D. Thank you. I think the most important thing to remember when committing a murder-suicide is the order. (laughs) (laughs) Have a good night. Thank you very much. Pretty funny, kid. This is a tough call, but I'm going to give you an 11. 14! The race is on! I thought that was a really great joke. Because, I mean, without order, uh, people get upset. <laughs> Next performer has been uh, making people laugh for seven and a half years. Yeah, but not without breathing. <laughs> <laughs>
Thank you, John Gold. And now for our final... Hey, that was not my joke. Yes, yes, it was. No, no, I have, a, I have a joke prepared. Okay, be that way. Elderly woman with two seeing eye dogs. I said, why do you need two? She says, one's for reading. <laughs> <laughs> that is a funny that mother. Is, yes, the mother is funny. I give John Gold a 11 out of 100. 12! Finally, we bring up a sexy young woman who does observational comedy. So please welcome Tanya. So, did you ever notice how guys <laughs> put their hands in their pants? Oh my god, I'd so do that. Seriously. Yeah. Look, I'm getting harder and harder to pick these scorings. Did that guy just say, uh... Yes, yes, he did. Hey, baby, I'm getting hard, too. Oh, God. I'm right with you, man! Tanya, and I hope I'm saying your name correctly because I've never met you before. 96 out of 100. Seriously? Did you hear Tanya with Rick in the men's room stall before the show? Yeah, but I just assumed it was a two-seater. Oh, it was. Hi. I'm Tom Snyder, the uh, creator and director of Explosion Bus, uh, which actually uh, comes from a project John Katz and I did years ago called The Traveling Talent Show. We started it in the year 2000. So if anything, we are persistent. We're sort of like the Johnny Apple talents. Do you mean Johnny Apple C? I do. But I mean, oh, you know, I'm using like Johnny okay. Apple C. Oh, I see what you mean. But, but I'm using it as a... Right. Instead of like giving them food, I'm teaching them to fish. You're teaching them to fish? Well, you know that old saying and I could... I don't know the saying. And I guess there, if you don't know it, then I guess there's no saying. Even though it's been years since uh, a lot of these shows, my former shows, uh, ended, um, I still have a, an incredible affection for the kind of characters we made that were uh, pathetic, always, pretty much always sweet, and uh, I hope you feel the same way. Dad? Yes. Why are you wearing sunglasses in the house? Well, the prescription pen, they're, um, they're helping me to read, actually, and, and, and besides, my, my regular ones aren't ready yet, but but I like the way these look. I think they... I, oh, you I, do? Yeah, I think they look uh, I don't, cool. Uh, Explosion Bus has been a quirky series um, and a hell of a lot of uh, fun for us to make, but in its current form, it was not able to grow on the internet in the way it had to for us to continue making it. How's America gonna see it? You hit the on button. How hard can that be? Turn on what? Legitimate question. Yeah. She's making a... Very valid point. Yeah. Very, is that... It's not, not... We, we have not given one iota of thought. That chapter is over. This chapter that you've just been part of. But we're really excited about a brand new show we're doing that's going to be a different format. It's still done by Explosion Bus Productions. Our new show is going to star a lot of the people I've worked with in the past. Uh, we have the enthusiasm and excitement of a lot of names who you know and love from the comedy world. Whoops, you know what the music means. Our time is up. So, thank you for watching Explosion Bus, and uh, please join us soon.